Hello everybody, I'm Melissa and welcome back to Book Bar and welcome to a fun video. <laughs> so recently I saw Bray at Four Paws in a Book do a video like this where she talked about 10 highly rated on Goodreads books that she recommends. And so I figured I would do the same thing, uh, you know. But I have a little bit of a few caveats. One, that they have to have over 50,000 ratings and above a four star rating. And also, it's either the first book or can be read completely as a standalone. So, yeah, we're just going to get in, get on into it. We're going to go 10 to 1. So, starting with the lowest highly rated book that I would recommend. And that, that one is, and I had to have given them all four or five stars. Um, those are my other caveats. So, the first one is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Bryan. This is the first book in the Skyland series. This both of these could totally be read as standalones, but it is more fun if you're reading back to back because you do see um, the second book, like the her the heroine, like what she's going through. You do kind of see a little bit of it in this one. But this is y Yasmin and Josiah, and they are a divorced couple who are co-parenting and owning a, they own a restaurant together. And they are both kind of starting to move on, but they both realize that maybe they're not ready for that. And you know, they need to confront the trauma of the past, what had happened to them, and, you know, maybe find their way back to each other. And it is absolutely stunning. This book has 57,854 ratings for an average of 4.37 stars. So definitely highly rated, definitely recommend it. 100%. Fantastic. Love it. Uh, yeah. But the reason I do have first books or could be read completely as standalones is because a lot of times like a second book might be rated higher, but most of the time, if you don't like the first book, you're not going to read the second book. So that's why it's only first books in the series. Then we, or standalones. Then we have I Must Betray You by Rita Septis. This is a YA historical fiction following, um, I can't think of, it's a, it was a war, a civil war, trying for, fighting for freedom. I can't remember what it was, where it was, but it follows a boy named Christian. And he, you know, is trying to survive this, what's going on and everything that is happening. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I read this, it's been a while now, but so I don't remember full like details, but I don't want to say much because it is very much like a book that you should go into completely blind. But yeah, it has 70,806 ratings for an average of 4.1 stars. It is phenomenal, definitely worth the read, uh, especially if you'd like, especially if you like historical fiction. Um, it is really good and it's very digestible because it is a YA. So definitely fantastic. Then we have Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. Um, Saving Six and Redeeming Six are both technically rated higher, but those are books three and four. So, and you have to have read those to read these. So to read, you have to have read this to read those. So that's why Binding 13 is on the list. Um, this is Shannon and Johnny. And yes, it is a big boy, but it is phenomenal. This follows two high schoolers in Ireland. And Shannon is has had a rough life. She's had a lot of rough stuff go on. Um, her home life is not great and she has been severely bullied at school. So she transfers to the private school, Tom and College. And there she, on the first day of school, she gets kicked in the head by a rugby ball, kicked by Sir Johnny Cavanaugh. And her mom thinks, oh no, it's starting all over again. Johnny did not mean to kick her. He's Johnny's going through his own stuff and he had had a bad day and kicked the ball out of frustration and just happened to hit Shannon but he does everything he can to make things better and this book will rip your heart out it will put it back together it'll rip your heart out again and put it back together again but absolutely love this definitely worth it it has a 124,204 ratings for an average of 4.4 stars. So definitely worth it. Next up, we have the first of two nonfictions on this list. And the first one is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And this is told, is 
I would recommend listening to the audiobook because Jeanette McCarty narrates it. This is basically just telling her life and growing up on Nickelodeon and what her mom made her do and the horrific things that happened to her and the abuse that her mom put her through. And yeah, it's gut-wrenching, but it is fantastic. And this one has 1 million 11,548 ratings for an average of 4.46 4, stars. Definitely worth it. Definitely makes sense. Uh, it all fits. Yes, like fantastic. Love it. Uh, Got wrenching, but also like the end, like, you know, it's just it all makes sense. And like, you're like, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Moving on. Next up is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. Again, like the other volumes are higher rated, but obviously if you didn't like the first one, why would you continue? So yes, uh, this is Nick and Charlie. It is a coming of age, learning about sexuality and who people are, who you are, romance between Nick and Charlie. And it is just absolutely beautiful. And I love it. And that one has 729,684 ratings for an average of 4.47 stars. Like, it's definitely worth it. Definitely makes sense. Next up, we have one that some people might argue is not a standalone. But it really only isn't, like, it makes sense completely on its own. But if you've read other books by this author, there are like Easter eggs and things that connect that are all kind of helpful and are there fun little surprises, but it could 100% be read as a standalone. And that is Just for the Summer by Abby Menace. Now I know this is a newer release, so thing, as time goes on, things will change, but it has been out for over a month. So almost two months now. So I'm counting it. Um, and yeah, this follows Justin and Emma and Justin posts on the Am I the A-hole Reddit page talking about naming his dog after his best friend because his best friend has found the love of his life who happens to be Justin's ex. Justin's okay with that. That's not why he, he is mad at his best friend. But his best friend has left their lease and now Justin is in a precarious situation. So he named his dog after his best friend. And he also posts in the same post that he has a history of the women that he dates finding the love of their life after they date him. So now he just is like, he has women calling him, people wanting to write stories about him because they think that they can break the, you know, they can find the love of their life if they date him. Which, you know, he's like, well, this isn't fair to me. In comes Emma, who also has the same curse where all the men she dates end up finding the love of their lives after they date her. And so they decide to devise a plan that they are going to date just for the summer. Uh, Emma works as a traveling nurse, so she can pretty much go wherever. And her and her best friend agree to go to Minnesota to, so she can date uh, at Justin for the summer. And, you know, things are going to happen, of course. But this one already has 118,177 ratings in the first two months. Uh, and an average of 4.47 stars. So definitely a book that I think is worth it and you should definitely pick it up. Next, we have Crescent City House of Earth and Blood, the first book in the Crescent City series by Miss Sarah J. Mass. This book has 698,689 ratings for an average of 4.49 stars. This follows Bryce Quinlan, who is a half a half human female who lives in... Crescent City and uh, at the beginning of the book she witnesses something tragic happen or she doesn't witness but she comes home to something tragic happening and she's kind of just known as like this vapid party girl and she may end up like after this horrible thing happens it's been now it's there's a two-year time jump and things like that are happening again so she is tasked by Micah the mayor governor of the city to look into these and she is put with bodyguard and fallen angel hunt Ethelar to kind of like be a buddy cop and figure out what is going on and yeah it is phenomenal I love this book this is as you can tell um yeah probably 
my favorite Sarah J Mass book. I know. But it was also my first Sarah J Mass book, so that's probably why. But yeah, definitely worth it. Um, it is urban fantasy, so do know that if you don't like urban fantasy, you probably won't like it because they do use cell phones, there's guns, all sorts of stuff like that. So yeah. But yeah, love it. Then at number three, we have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I have the wonderful, gorgeous dragon edition. Um, this falls a girl named Violet Sorengale who is, thinks, she goes up thinking she's going to be a scribe, plans on being a scribe, and ends up on the day, first day of school basically. She, her mom basically tells her, no, you're going to be a dragon rider. You have no other options. And so she goes to Best Guy at War College and she has to cross the parapet on the first day of school, which is very dangerous. And she survives. And then she meets uh, Zayden Ryerson, who is her mother's enemy. Enemy's son. Her mother happened to take out Zayden's dad. And so, you know, there is a little bit of an anger towards them. Uh, and yeah, you know, things are gonna happen. Violet's gonna learn she's a lot stronger than she, than everyone thinks she is. And yeah, fantastic. It has 1,615,775 ratings for an average of 4.59 stars. Um, this book was, when it came out, I mean, everyone is about fourth thing. It's basically got crack in the pages. It is fantastic. Definitely worth it. Um, we'll see how the rest of the series goes, but definitely love this one. Then coming in at number two, we have Manacled by Sin Lin Yu. This is a fan fiction, a Germany fan fiction that has been picked up by a publisher. So it will like, it's going to get traditionally published. It will change, things will change. But if you still have access or you still have it downloaded, I don't know if it's still on AO3. Uh, I haven't checked. I don't even know how to link it or anything, but it was on archive of our own to read for free. I don't know if it still is. Um, someone that knows fan fiction would probably be better to ask. I, this is the only one I've ever read. Uh, but this is a Hermione and Draco fan fiction that has taken the world by storm and it has been picked up by a publisher. It is phenomenal. It, it has 83,908 ratings for an average of 4.65 stars. Uh, it is a chunky boy. I don't know what's gonna happen. Obviously things are gonna change because it is a Hermione and Draco fan fiction. And so that's gonna have like, there, those things are gonna have to change. The names of characters are gonna have to change. Um, but yeah, basically it is if Voldemort had won the war and all of the people we love are, all of the people in the main Harry Potter world are dead except for Draco and Hermione. And Hermione, it's basically like a mashup of, um, Harry Potter and Handmaid's Tale, where Hermione is sold to Draco to basically be a breed, like to be a breeder and have his babies because the like there's no magical babies being born. And so they are going to use people that were on the wrong side of the war to make more magical babies. But yeah, um, it is gut-wrenching. It is fantastic, definitely worth it. And when I don't, I know that there's a title, I'll see if I can find it and put it here uh, for the traditionally published version. But when it comes out, you should definitely read it. If you can't read it on AO3 anymore, I don't know. I'll see if I can find it. I'll let you know. Then at number one, um, a book that I, remember when this happened viscerally because I lived 45 minutes away from where it happened and I remember this trial I remember everything and I remember the awful guy basically being victimized even though he was the uh, aggressor and essayed a woman and that is no my name by Chanel Miller um, this is at the second nonfiction on this list this is Chanel Miller who was 
a student at Stanford and actually I don't even think she was a student I think I don't remember but she went to a party at Stanford with her friends and she ended up getting essayed by a I'm not even gonna a waste of space human um who was a swimmer on the swim team and everyone like I will never forget his dad saying, why would he risk his life, like his future as an Olympian for a few minutes of pleasure or something? It was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, but basically, Chanel Miller, nobody knew her name. Um, she was, uh, they basically called her Jane Doe, or Emily Doe was what they called her uh, throughout the trial and everything. And after it, she decided, I want to tell my story. And yeah, it is absolutely gut-wrenching um just the way the whole justice system works towards women who are violated and yeah it's terrible but it is such a phenomenal read that I think everyone should read it because it is and it is definitely worth it it has 202,927 ratings for an average of 4.71 stars and it is definitely worth it. Um, but yeah, that is the list of 10 books that I think are appropriately highly rated on Goodreads that I will always recommend. Um, my next video will be underrated on Goodreads books that I will always recommend. But yeah, if you made it to the end of this video, leave me a pencil emoji for writing reviews and ratings and everything and don't forget to like comment subscribe all that fun stuff it really helps me out and i will talk to you all in the next one bye